So hi, everybody. Um, we have uh, three hours to cover three topics. I don't know which ones you all signed up for, um, but I'm trying to be respectful of that 60 minute window because I think once we get into it, it's going to be, uh, it's going to end too soon. So one of the things we designed uh, into the day, hopefully, is breakout time. If after the sessions you want to grab a Chromebook, we've got a bunch out there and kind of sit around the corner or take it anywhere in the high school, really, and just sort of process and gel what you've uh, picked up. Um, that, that's totally fine. We've prepared for that. So see me after each session if you want to cruise out with a Chromebook and, and whatever. Um, but thanks for coming. I know it's summer and you still uh, have other choices of what you could do with your time. And so the fact that you chose to be here is pretty great and I appreciate that. Um, the first thing on the agenda today is Gmail. Uh, we're going to get into it uh, a little bit. Some of the fun tips and tricks and answer questions. So uh, one of the thoughts that I think me and the other presenters, we have Dana, we have Mady, we have Julie Snyder, uh, who are all going to switch around presenting today. Uh, we're doing this twice in the afternoon, too. So if you really had a great time, call your friends. <laughs> call your friends and tell them to come in the afternoon, because they don't want to miss this one. Uh, but you'll see Mon in the back. We're also recording this. So one of the things we're trying to do this year is record our uh, trainings and presentations. Uh, so we're recording it two ways, it's interesting. A recording screen capture and uh, video. And then uh, Mana in her awesome editorialness will splice and make neat products in the end. So we actually had a training on Gmail already from uh, the consultant who helped us transition this summer. Uh, and that uh, training session was much longer than an hour. It was for administrators in the morning and it was for clerical staff in the afternoon. Uh, and we've done similar video editing with it. So uh, when this is all over, I'll share out to you uh, where you can find those videos too if you want to see a, a long form version of what we're about to do, um, probably with more details and uh, less animation from the speaker because it wasn't me. Um, so the plan is at each of the sessions to just sort of um, go over some things quickly and leave a lot of time for questions. So given that we're leaving a lot of time for questions, if something you don't have to wait till the end. So if something pops up and you have a question about it, you know, interrupt. Let's go for it. It's a small enough group that I think we can get through all that. So, um, yay. Does that sound like a good plan? Everybody game for that? All right. I'm sorry I didn't bring coffee. Okay. Um, so Gmail, uh, how to access it should be the same way you've always accessed it, but there might be some additional ways, right? So I'm going to spend some time cruising around. Oh, not to that window. Sorry. Uh, to the home page. Everybody's used to the home page, right? Okay. And on your home page, there's a tab, a magic tab called Tools tab. Hopefully everyone's familiar with it. This is where we will post uh, links to uh, education, technology, tools, and resources. Um, and you'll see not one, not two, but three places two places to <laughs> click your email. So there's an email tab at the top, or email button at the top rather, a Gmail thing here. Now the hidden trick is you can just type gmail.com anywhere you are. Good to go. But a lot of people are used to click, 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 click to get into their email. Those paths are still here. Um, but now that we're on Gmail, all you have to do is go to gmail.com. So let's go into gmail.com. Fun. Okay. And log in with your at mtlc.net. Has everybody logged in at least once to their Gmail already? Yes. Okay, great. So, of course, I'm showing this administrator account for the student side because who knows what kind of emails I have and this is being recorded. But uh, <laughs> essentially, this is going to be your layout. And we'll go through some of the settings and, um, and whatnot. Um, by the end of this thing, too, I want to show you all uh, where some resources are for training. So don't let me forget that part, too. Uh, I'm just so eager to rush into this. Um, the most important point I want to convey is when you are doing something with a Google tool, whether it's Gmail, Classroom, Drive, whatever, and you say, how do I do this? Right? The best answer is to Google it. Right? So one of the advantages, hopefully, to being on the Google tools and the Google Apps for Education is that um, how do I set up a vacation rule? for my Gmail. I know Chris told me about that, but it was August and I hadn't had my coffee yet and I don't remember. So if you say Gmail, how, vacation, uh, response, boom, right there. 
So immediately, every one of these links is going to tell you how to do it. So that's, keep that in the forefront of the mind, right? Always you can just Google it. Um, so everybody's in their Gmail. Okay. On the left side, you will see inbox, start, important, sent, draft, follow-up. You should also see a bunch of folders that look like, they like say inbox, okay? You guys have those? Underscore inbox. That is your migrated mail from the old system. So under that inbox, you will see what you think are folders. But they're not. Okay. What they are is labels. Okay. So Google doesn't use folders. They label things. And so it's a paradigm shift, but just a little one. Okay. Uh, when you move something into a folder, you're really just applying a label to it. You're all familiar with categories. Uh, so similar idea. Now one of the advantages to this is you can have an email that applies to two or three different categories or labels. So in the old way of doing things, you can only put it in one folder. But now one of the things is you could put it in as many folders as you want. Just keep giving it more labels. Okay? So a label is a folder. And you can just right click on it and you can just add a label. You can drag labels to it. It gets exciting. All right, I'm going to give up the ghost. I'm going to log in as my personal email. What the heck? Go for it, right? Don't live in fear, especially with tech. All right, because I have a bunch of labels already set up. Different accounts. Accounts. That's not right. Okay. So you'll notice some things are a little different. Uh, I have rotating themes just to play with it. Uh, that's the wood grain in the back. I'll show you where that is. I have a chat along the right side. We'll, we'll explain this a little bit, okay? The text use this all the time. If you have opportunity to use Google Chat, it is, it can be mind changing. So like, for example, um, I could uh, drop a question to six other tech directors in South Hills and get three or four responses within three minutes. That's pretty powerful. So that's like a whole, added uh, order of magnitude to my network just by this tool. Um, so if you want to use it, we'll see, see, there we go. Ross just popped up on me and Mona will edit that, right? <laughs> okay. Um, so you'll see all these folders, except yours is called underscore inbox. Okay. Fun thing is it doesn't have to be. So notice as I hover over it, this little arrow on the right side of it. I'm going to point to it here explicitly. This little arrow, okay? That'll give you some options like rename. So you can rename your underscore inbox to be folders or whatever you want to think of, or just inbox without the underscore. But that would be confusing, so I recommend against inbox. But you can, rena you can rename it anything you want other than inbox, okay? You can assign label colors, right? It gets, uh, it gets fun. You can have fun with your email. Okay. Emails can be in your inbox or they can skip the inbox and still go into the folders. Okay. So if you want to remove an email, okay, uh, you can just right click it and archive. Okay. You can delete, but why delete? Right. If you archive, it goes down into the folders. It stays down there, and it'll stay out of your inbox view. Okay. Now, the most powerful thing for me when I switched over was that I have 600,000 folders, as you can see. <laughs> right? And most of the emails in these folders go in there automatically. Anyone use automatic rules? Awesome. This is going to change your life. So let's say... Um, 
let's say, oh, resonance violins, perfect example, okay? So I have this automatic billing for my kids' cellos, and I don't want it to come straight into the inbox. I want it to go in this little folder called resonance. I'll get to that later, okay? So right click, nope, sorry, my bad. Hit the checkbox on it. Under more at the top, filter messages like these. So filtering is what the old rules were, but nobody used rules before, so you don't have to worry about the paradigm shift. Now it's just a new idea, filtering, okay? So you can filter. It asks you to build a rule, okay? So the first page of the rules is what criteria is going to be a checked to see if the email matches. So I'm going to say all emails from residents violins. Create a filter with this search. And you can see in the background it's already made four of them. It's already found four of them that match the rule. So as you change the rule up, it'll show you in the background how many hits you get enough from your inbox. So I'm going to create a filter. And this is all the things you can do once it finds an email from residents violins. Alright, I want to skip the inbox. I do not want to mark it as red. Starring something is like favoriting, you should all know that from Google Drive and other Google things. Uh, apply the label, this is where I go with folders, right? Choose the label. Look at all these ridiculous labels I have. A zillion. But I don't have one called resonance, so I'm going to make a new label right now. And I'm going to call it resonance, and, 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 and one of the music teachers is going to help me spell it. How many ends? <laughs> Two, no, 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 that was the trick question, okay. So is that it? All right, and I'm going to nest the label underneath my thing called folders. And I'm going to hit create. Okay. I can also choose to forward it. Right? So all my emails from Amazon.com get forwarded to Sue Kang because she does all the bill paying. So it's important that we get that. Or you, can know, you can delete it if they come in. You just can't stand this person so much that every email from this person, just delete it straight off the bat. Okay? You can also say never send it to spam. So sometimes maybe it'll think my residence emails are spam. And I'm like, no, 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 that's a bill I got to pay. Don't ever mark it as spam. I always mark it as important. I don't really know the difference. I haven't studied important yet. I'll have to Google that. And categories, I'm not big on that. But also apply the filter to four matching messages. So it can retroactively go back in time. And say, not just moving forward, but go back in those four that you found. Do this to that. Wow. So create the filter. <laughs> Boom. They've disappeared from my inbox. And under the resonance label. Look at all these ridiculous labels. Here we go. There we go. Tuck some on. Yes? So how will you know that that email came in? Yeah. Email. So as you look at your folders, you can see I have two for the municipality. I have 11 ISTEs. I have one PSBA, one PTA, one residence, one Sprout Fund. Those are all new. Yeah. But that's my choice. So if I had not checked the box that said skip the inbox, then it would be in this nice top view right here. Okay, but that 25 is just what's new in your inbox. Correct. That's correct. And uh, it, it can still sign, so here's the work orders, for example. I have a work order rule. When you guys submit work orders, uh, they somehow get assigned to me. I don't know how that works. Um, but when it happens, I put the label, but I don't skip the inbox. So you can see it shows up here, but it also shows the label. And if I had made a pretty color, it would have done that too. Same with my ideal integrations ones. So that's the difference between skipping the inbox or not. Now, if you delete that work order email eventually, will it also delete from the folder? Yeah, if I truly delete it versus archiving it, it'll delete from the folder. There's deleting and archiving. When you're on your phone, by the way, we'll talk about this near the end, hopefully, and you swipe a Gmail, it archives it. It does not delete it. And there might be a setting somewhere to say, no, no, really delete it when I swipe it. I don't know that one. We'll have to Google that, too. But the default thing when you swipe it is to archive it, which means it'll stay in the folder, uh, but it won't be in your inbox anymore. If you delete trash, it's deleting it. Yeah. If it's really in your trash, like, let me find one I just can't stand. <laughs> oh, these are all really good. Hold on, let me go to my unread, my red. So I've also st staggered the view. If you guys like this, I'll show you this right now. I have in unread at the top, and then I have everything else. So once I read it, it all goes down here. You guys like this? If you like it. Right, wait. <laughs> So it's broken into two groups. My email view is broken into two groups. Unread and everything else. Okay. If you like that, it is under your inbox. These are different ways you can look at your inbox. So you can look at your start first, 
You unread first, which is what I picked. Uh, important is this little yellow thing here. Uh, Google tries to guess what's important to you sometimes, and you can have rules that say mark it as important. I haven't played too much in that area yet, but if you like this little important yellow clicker thing, I don't see how it's different than the star, but... Oh, I do, because Google will try to guess at what's important. They'll never guess at what has a star. Um, so those are just different ways you can look at your inbox. Okay, how's everybody feel so far? Good tips, good stuff? I like it. Okay, filters, rules. Filters will change your life. If you have a lot of email coming from a lot of different places and you want to just make a lot of nice rules to put it in nice and then everything that ends up in the inbox ends up being important. It's a bit of a setup. It took me like a couple hours to knock mine out. And that was duplicating most of what I'd already done before. So it can take some time depending on what kind of emails you're getting in. But I know when I look at these 25 unread emails in my inbox, they're all pretty important. Or if they're not, that's a trigger for me to make another filter. Resonance violins, for example. Okay. Next one that'll come in from some newsletter, I'll be like, ah, I missed a filter. And that'll be the trigger. I'll make the filter for that newsletter down into the archives it'll go. And then, you know, in my new quest to not have a red dot, um, I scroll through this list, which is what Beth Ann was asking about. How do you know all these unread ones? So, like, usually before I leave for the day, I'll check out all these unreads and mark them all as red. I'll check out all my Google Plus notifications, my ISTE, my municipality, etc. Okay. Another one is spam. So in the old days, we had a spam service that was running. It would uh, send you a daily spam thing. Did everybody get those daily spam? Yeah, it doesn't, we don't do that anymore. So Google, boy, I wish I could find a piece of spam. I'm so good at it that I can't, I can't find an example of a piece of, well, all right, let's pretend. Let's pretend. I don't know. Yeah, I'm really nervous to mark something as spam that's not spam. Um, right here, Google Apps Team. All right, let me, let's say I think this is spam. If you checkbox it, sorry, I clicked the right button. If you checkbox it under more, oh, I know, so I picked a Google one. Here, I just sent you an email. You can spam it. All right. <laughs> So we all, we, we all know Jeff is spammy, right? So let's say I don't I want to unsubscribe from this ridiculous list. If you check it once, oh, it's not doing it. All right, so maybe you get into it. There it is. Report spam. Okay. I'm not going to check it. If you if you report spam. It will dump it into spam. It'll try to remember that future messages are like this should also go into spam. And it will try to unsubscribe you from a list. So if it's coming from Constant Contact or one of those emailing services, a lot of them will have unsubscribe information at the bottom. Google will try to follow those links and unsubscribe you if you mark it as spam. Yeah? Um, is it harmful, potentially, to open that yeah. in order to to the drop down box? No, I mean, again, usually it's like newsletters, right? Uh, people trying to sell you something, check out this new product. Uh, the only thing that's really harmful is clicking on an attachment. But one of the things that Gmail's really good at is because we're one of millions of people that use Gmail, they know a spammy attachment more than maybe our old Exchange server would have known it. So uh, they have the rule of large numbers on their side in terms of like, they won't even let it get to you if it's that bad, if it's something dangerous. Um, so, I've been using that a lot. Uh, that whole, yeah, I like to say that's a spam. Okay, let's go into settings. All right, because it's 826, and settings is really where it gets good. So all of your Google tools have this little, should have this wheel up in the upper right-hand corner. Let's you do settings for it. There's comfortable, cozy, and compact. That's your font spacing. You can play with that. This is comfortable. 
cozy. You can just see it's getting more and more compact. Okay. There's also themes, which is just for pretty. Okay, and at the very bottom should be a, yeah, the one I pick, the question mark. So this one will switch up on you every once in a while. But you can play with themes. And I think you can even customize because there's a My Photos button. I just have it rotate every once in a while. All right, and under settings is where all the, now we've opened the hood of the car. We're looking at the engine here. But some of these are going to be uh, right off the gate important to you. Um, number one, conversation view. Wait, I'm sorry, where yeah. am I So under your little uh, gear wheel. Yeah. Wow, excuse me. Uh, settings. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, conversation view. Uh, therapy. Uh, okay, so the analogy I've heard about conversation is cilantro. Right? There's nobody that has a moderate opinion of cilantro. People love cilantro or they hate cilantro. Nobody's like, meh, cilantro. <laughs> right? Conversation view is cilantro. Yeah. Right? You either love it or you hate it. Supposedly has something to do with your brain. Nice. Personally, my brain can't figure it out. Can't, it does not like it, so I turn it off. All right, warning, if you install the Gmail app on your phone, you cannot turn off conversation view. Very annoying. But hopefully they're going to fix that. Uh, but for now, uh, you can turn it on and off on the web browser. On, does everybody know what conversation view is? Do you remember when we switched to the newest Outlook? Anybody went around for that one? Back when Outlook changed to that yellow? Uh, and everything was like, it would tuck it all up into one thread. That's what conversation view is. So you send an email, they reply, you send an email, they reply. It's just one line on your inbox. And then as you open it, it'll show you all the things in that thread. Okay, which can be good. Personally, my personal story is if you send an email to more than one person, and then different people respond in that thread, it gets all jammed. It's really confusing for this brain. So I turn it off. But uh, our consultant who helped us do the conversion this summer loves it. He has conversation view on all the time. So personal choice. Um, but this is where you decide once you've made that personal choice, this is where you, how you turn it on or off. It's that setting right here for conversation view. So Chris, what you're saying is when you're on conversation view on, yeah. you can see every, every back and forth email between the person. Yeah, you can see them in either view, but the way you see them is different, right? So if conversation view is on, you see one line for that thread. And if it's off, you see 10 lines, one for each reply. That's the way I like it. But I leave it to everyone for, to make their personal choice on that. Okay, my picture. My picture is important. Okay? As you send Gmails to other Gmail people, whether they're in Mount Lebanon or whether they're parents, right? If it's Gmail to Gmail, this little picture gets known and pops up. And it can be nice. It's a nice face instead of a big cold black and white email from the classroom. It could just be a nice, this is from your teacher. I encourage photos. You know, something nice and professional and don't have to go through all that. But you know what I'm saying. All right. Um, <laughs> signature. Okay. If you all want your emails to go out as so-and-so from this school, this grade, this phone number, this personal motto. Okay, this is where you put it. Um, at the bottom of this is when you are away from the school. So summertime or if you're out for a while or, you know, if there's a day when you're doing curriculum and there's a sub and you can say, hey, I'm not in the classroom today, but I'll get back to you tomorrow or whatever. Okay, it's at the bottom of that screen. Everybody good so far? All right, the next, along your settings, the next one over is labels. These are all the folders that you made before. Okay, so if you want to rename them or play with them or nest them in under certain things or just delete them outright, 
This is your whole list of, okay? Right next to general. So we're still in settings. And it, this is all your different kinds of settings across the top here. So the second one is labels and it's just basically folder management. You can like nest it under different things. You can rename them, okay? Uh, inbox, accounts, filters and blocked addresses. So this is where it gets, this is where it gets good. So I have, as you can see, a zillion rules, right? A zillion. And now let's say, you know, to Beth Ann's earlier point about uh, filters going, staying in the inbox or leaving the inbox, let's say I change my mind. Let's say I want the Amazon ones to um, stay in the inbox and not just archive. Just control F, like a browser find, Amazon. What oh, you got to type in there? Ooh, hello. And there's the Amazon rule. So at that point, I can edit it. And this is the rule I set up before. So I can say, did I tap it right? Hello. Anyway, you can see this is just like when I made the rule. Okay, so at this point I can uncheck or recheck or, you know, I can change my mind on the different settings that I did for that rule. But I just want to show you that when you're under settings and under your filters, once you make a filter it doesn't go away and hide on you. I mean, here they all are. So if you change your mind and want to like just delete this rule altogether and start over, they're all listed here under filters. Um, chat, right, this is on the right side, this is the thing on the right side I was telling you about. Okay, if you want to be able to Google Hangouts people, which I recommend. Labs, uh, a lot of different Google applications have a thing called labs. And labs uh, indicates experimental functionality that pretty much works and might not work at some point and might stop working at some point or might get rolled into their real product. It's like their beta zone, okay? So Gmail has a lot of um, labs apps that you can experiment with and play with and some of them are pretty crucial and great and others are pretty silly. Um, one of the ones you can see I'm using right now is called Right Side Chat. Okay, if I disable Right Side Chat, all these chattable people on the right will move over to the left. Oh, I don't want to do that. Um, there's also, who misses, who misses the email preview window? Do you guys like the preview? Yeah, I'm not a preview fan, but if you are a preview fan, that's in here. Where I don't know. Hold on. Yeah, preview pane. So if you enable the preview pane, then while you are here in your um, Gmail, you'll have an extra button up here. And that will let you preview your emails like this. Or if you like it, oh sorry, if you like it better that way. You do that. Or you can just turn it off. But it's still enabled. So, uh, let's see. Any other things in labs I want to make sure you see? Does really work? Yeah, I do send. Where's that one? Is that under labs? Yeah, undo send definitely works. So I've set mine to 10 seconds. So when I hit send, it actually doesn't send for 10 seconds. And there's a little, well, we can do it. So what, you could change your mind? Yeah, you can say, ooh, jeez. Not like the olden days that were really just there. Yeah, correct. Yeah. The olden days, that was a April Fool's joke, right? Like, hey, we've done this unsend for Friday nights. No, the real, um, this definitely holds your email before sending for 10 seconds. So, so if I send Beth Ann an email like, Here's something I don't want to send. Uh, all right, so you'll see now I've enabled it. So when I hit send, it'll say your message has been sent. Undo. Woo. And then you'll see. So then you'll also see it tucked it into drafts. So this is where it goes if you're working on an email and everything shuts down on you. It'll start. It'll be in your drafts. 
Okay. So I sent, did everybody see, everybody see me send that to Beth Ann? And I, I had 10 seconds to hit undo, and I did. So she'll, she'll never see this. <laughs> But if I want to just edit it, maybe just add a typo. Maybe I really just wanted two exclamation points. I can just edit it, hit send, good to go. And now she will see this because I'm not going to hit undo. Okay. Desktop notifications you may like. All right, that lets a little box pop up in the lower corner when you get an email. Um, uh, yes. Yeah, I recommend continuing to use Gradebook Dashboard for emailing your parents just because they are changing their own email addresses all the time. I see that come through. Like parents will send us emails like, hey, can you change my email address? And we'll have to say, no, you have to do that yourself. Here's how. Um, but they do change it all the time. So if you take a static picture of your parents' emails, you will miss those changes. Okay. So I recommend against it, just for currency. Um, okay. How's everybody feel on Gmail? Good. Good? All right, I want to spend just a little bit of time on calendar. Chris, if you uh, yeah. send a, an email to your 20 you know, students' parents, yeah. 20 responses, can you take each thread and put it into a different folder? Like, you know, I yeah. want just parent emails if I have a couple kids that I'm going to have to contact all the time? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You can do, um, yeah, the, you can set up uh, rules for it, or you can just right click and apply a label. Uh, so under each email, if you'll see, so here's a quote. Right next to the more is a labels button. So when you pull it down, it's got all your labels right there. You can also click and drag. Yeah. So I can click this. Uh, let's say this has something to do with AIU. I can click and drag. See little folders that AIU. I can just drag that right on. Now it's added that label. Cool. And so in, <laughs> in the conversation view, I don't know how challenging that would be. If you had conversation view turned on and it was all nested inside, I, I, sure. You tell me. <laughs> I have it turned off. So I could. No problem. I don't know about you. All right, I want to spend just a second on calendar. So calendar um, is hopefully helpful to you guys. Um, Oh. Yeah. Great question. Um, so you see the little close. See the little waffle button up here. This is called the apps chooser. Okay. You you can click it and pick calendar, or you can type calendar.mtlsd.net. Both will get you there. You can have more than one calendar. You can see I have one, two, three, four, or five calendars. When someone sends you an invitation, it can only go into your default calendar. That's Google's rule, not mine. So if you have a personal calendar, if you try to run a personal calendar like this, I'll tell you I'm experiencing some challenges with that. My wife sends me an invitation to some event in the evening. I want to hit accept, but I cannot accept it onto my personal calendar. I have to accept it under my work calendar, and then I have to make a copy of it, and I have to delete the old one, and then she thinks I canceled it, even though I just was moving it over. So I'm experiencing challenges with that. But that's not to say we shouldn't go in, just to say it's not, it's not fluid. You can't accept into any calendar you want. But that said, I can send invitations from any calendar that I have. So I can create, um, I love that the video is going to show a happy hour I have tonight. This is great. So uh, I can create a happy hour event. I can right click, I can invite people, they can accept. And then if people are looking at my work calendar, they won't necessarily see you'll, these green ones because I've shared them differently. OK? Um, you can. Look at your sharing by checking out the calendars on the left and share this calendar or calendar settings. Okay? A lot of options in here, all of them Googleable. Uh, one of the things you'll see though is as the timeline moves, it fades out your old appointments, just so you know like where you are in the real world.
Um, what else do I want to say about calendar without throwing too much at you? Um, if you are uh, a smartphone user, the calendar app by Google is really good. So how many of you have smartphones? Okay, I just want to spend a few minutes on that too, and I want to give you time to play as well. Um, when you configure your smartphones, it's important, there's two kinds of ways to do email on your smartphone. There's what we call the native app, that's the built-in. So how many iPhones here? How many Android? Okay, uh, so the iPhone is called Mail. I think Android is also called Mail, yeah, or Messages. I don't know what it's called. The one that comes built in with the phone is called the native app, okay? It's important to configure that to have your work email because if you're using any other app that you want to integrate with email, like pictures, let's say you want to email a picture to yourself, that native app has to be configured to use your email. So once you configure it, then you can add a more functional app called Gmail or Google Calendars and you can use that to check your mail and send your email. If you're going into your phone explicitly to do email or calendars, I'd use that app. But you have to configure the native app if you want to integrate the other apps with email. Does that make sense? So the, the steps to do that, I want to make sure everybody's aware of the staff portal on the new district homepage, mtlst.org. Right across the top, students, staff, that's you. Staff portal. There are login links, and then at the bottom there are help documents. The three that we have right now offered are connecting to the Wi-Fi with your personal device, setting up a teacher iPad, and smartphone configuration. So this smartphone configuration document was updated the day we switched to Gmail. Okay, and it'll step you through, hopefully accurately, all the things you need to do to um, add to the native app and then utilize the Gmail and calendar apps. And I, I really recommend the Gmail app and the calendar app. They're really good apps. They use all the colors, they use all, you can tell where you are in your calendar, it's not as confusing as the native one, but. And it's a full of pictures type helpful thing. Okay. All right, that leaves 15 minutes for questions and anything else. Chris? Yeah. Email, in, uh, just in front of the email in the inbox. Um, stars are important emails. And yeah. what about the arrows? I mean, I'm assuming any yellow arrows in, in this direction. Right, so, the, well, no, the yellow arrow is a combination of you and Google. Get, you know and Google guesses what's important. That's what that yellow thing is. The star is only you. You explicitly say, I want to star this. It's like a favorite. Um, so I don't actually pay a lot of attention to the important yet. Maybe I'll come to do so, but at this point I'm not. I use the stars. Because there's also, it's just like Google Drive, which you'll find out in the next hour. Uh, you can also, there's a starred thing right there. So I filter by my star. I've got like 10 go-to Google Docs I use all the time. I have starred them. So if I just look at starred, I can see all 10 of them, pluck it right out without searching around or trying to remember what it was named or whatever. So when we used to be able to hit the um, exclamation point, yeah. red, yeah, that's, as an email now, that's gone. Really yeah. Google has uh, decided that that is not effective and has done away with the exclamation mark. Okay, so I mean, you can say to yourself what's important, but in terms of telling them, hey, this is important, Google has done away with that. Okay. Yeah. They didn't ask me for a vote, but. Is it possible to make a rule, like a failure to do that, that anything you delete without actually reading can just be like a, a hard delete? I don't believe so, but you know what I, mean? I know what you mean. You see something like, Garbage, garbage. Yeah, I mean, on the web you can hit the delete button instead of the archive button, but yeah. on your phone, I don't know. Does everybody want to play? Okay, I'm happy to wander around as well. Yeah. I might have, I'm sorry, I was late. I might have missed this. Um, Probably didn't. The, the uh, list of names to the right of my emails. Yes. Those are recent email. It looks like 
Does it look like mine with green dots? No, green, well, uh, kind of. There's green dots up here, but not uh -huh. inside here. Is that how? Is this like a like a text message? Like yeah. Email. You could chat with those people. So if I want to talk to like Kristen and Dory, like my yes. team. Yes. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's cool. And do you have to turn that on or? Uh, you can turn that off somewhere in settings. Yeah. It is on. Okay. Yeah. Okay. How do people show up there? Uh, they're in the same domain. Okay. We're all in the same domain. And they have it turned on. So if you have it turned off, you won't show up on anybody's list. But if you have it turned on, you should show up on everybody's list. And I think, I do think that it prioritizes based on who you've recently chatted with. Okay. So like all those people at the top, I've chatted with all the time. So when you put conversation view on, that means that your other people will see that you're available. Chat. If you put chatting on, not conversation view. Okay. But yeah. Conversation view is the whole email thread you'll, thing. You'll get a little green dot next to you. Yeah, I'll show you where that is. That's under your settings. Oh. Okay. Yeah, it's on. Oh, it is on. Okay. And there's a whole there's a whole tab right there. So under settings, about right, right before labs, you'll see this chat at the top. That's where you flip it on and off. If you have it on, there's a third app that you can put on your smartphone, uh, Google Hangouts, which is really clutch. It'll replace every time you've ever wanted to Skype or FaceTime with somebody, you can Google chat. And I don't have, I don't have another hour to get cool on it, but Google Hangouts are like what should be done at Mount Lebanon, I think. You can you can connect classrooms. You can do video meeting. Yeah. You said that you separate your pain from like the ones that you're not read to. Yes. How did you do that? That is a point and then I'll go do it. If you hover over your inbox here, there's a little arrow. You click that down. And you'll see inbox type. And the way the one I picked is unread first. Yeah. So there's a quick way of deleting lots of emails. You can either don't forget one of the most one of the best things Google does is search, right? So um, uh, you can search for like if I want to delete all of my emails from Ross. But look, there's a whole bunch of others. So now, delete a date range. Oh, a date range. That's cool. Um, yeah. So this is cool. So that same screen we did when we made a filter is how you can search. So in your search tab at the top is a little down arrow, and then date within. Oh. So, one year. <laughs> like uh, all my emails around January 1st. And then once you find all those emails, that button lets you select them all, and then you can do whatever you want with them. I have this message that popped up when I clicked on the trash that says, Messages that have been in trash more than 30 days will automatically be deleted. Yeah. Then don't put them in trash. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's the search. Can't extend that. You can make a fake folder called Almost Trash and put them in there. <laughs> right, then don't put them in trash. I mean, that's, the, that's what archiving is, right? When you archive, it knocks it out of the inbox, but it keeps it down in the folders. Like that's just a paradigm shift for you. Just don't delete it anymore. And when you swipe it, don't forget you're not putting it in trash if you're using your phone. If your trash isn't showing, is there a button that helps you to show your trash? Anymore? Trash should be in the upper left-hand corner. Yeah. Okay. Whoa. <laughs> um, yeah. So it's a little tough for me to get to, but if you notice um, on the left side, there's a little more and less thing. If you don't see trash and you hit more, it'll be right down there under your spam. She doesn't have any trash. Well, hold on. Oh, there's trash. It's down the bottom. Yeah. I can't believe it. 
Is there any way to show how to do a chat? Yeah. Uh, just click on their name and it pops up. So a name that has a green icon. Yeah, that means they're online. Yep. So you can chat with me if you want. If you don't see me, you should be able to hit the little search bar and hit type Stengel. my personal Gmail calendar so that anything that I would add on my work went also to personal and vice versa. Mm. It's not showing up. No. Uh, no. Start over. <laughs> what is it that you want to have happen? What's your, what's your ideal? Well, I, I want to merge my two. Like, I don't want anybody to see, um, like, if I have a family event, but I want it to show up so that I don't... You want to see both calendars. Yes. Yeah. So, over on your... Um, I, I thought that I shared it. Like, I have Mailbox mm -hmm. and Fox calendar. I have two of them under my calendar. And then I have another one under other calendars. Yes. So, for example, I have some other calendars I've subscribed to. These are Google Apps um, type calendars. Right. Your personal one could be in that list. Right. Yeah. But it's not, it's not showing up. Have you, all right, let's take a look. Like, I can't, like, there's, I guess if I did it right. Yeah. See what I mean? I have the regular Marianne Fox one mm -hmm. up there, and then I have. And that's your personal one? And then I have that one. I'm not sure which one is which. <laughs> Do you know an event that you have on it? No. That you can test? No. Okay. So right now it's off, no. and right now it's on. Okay. When you click it and it goes to white, it'll turn oh, off. I so. I even told her. Right. Now what are these two here? Chat with me. I don't know. My list of people. See, I wonder if I, I if I didn't share it correctly. I shouldn't have those though. Oh. How, do, how do I initiate this? Like, I'm going to X you out. Okay, I'm going to X you out. How do I initiate this? Like, like, I wonder what these two things are. I don't see any events on this calendar. Mm -hmm. I just deleted it, yeah. Okay. Where is it? Did you? Okay, hang on. I'm looking to see how to get them on the right side. Yeah. 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 Well, if you yeah, if you search for the general system, mm -hmm. you're on your shore. But yeah. okay. Okay. okay, so that's my regular work one. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. And I wouldn't. I was just changing the view up here. Yep. Okay. Okay. Right. And so. No, I don't think it's safe. So oh, so now it's fun. So we can do this. Okay. Good question. So if I if I added today in here, mm -hmm. would it show up here? It would show up in your just in your view. Okay. But not. Anyone's look at that. Yeah. Yeah, because that's my calendar that was imported from old Outlook. Correct. Okay. Right. All right, but we can play with that too, okay. some more. All right, thank you. Okay. So we got about three more minutes till the next topic. Um, like I said, we have uh, Chromebooks you can play all day if you want as well.